Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday, the resurrection of the Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. The Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. To him be glory and power for all the ages of eternity. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate Easter Sunday. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life, we make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter opened his mouth and said, you know the word which was proclaimed throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good 
and healing all that were repressed by the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him manifest, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. This This is is the the day day that the Lord has made. Let Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. This This is is the day day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This This is is the day day that the Lord Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. To the Paschal victim, let Christians offer a sacrifice of praise. The lamb redeemed the sheep. Christ, sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life were locked together in a unique struggle. Life's captain died. Now he reigns, never more to die. Tell us, Mary, what did you see on the way? I saw the tomb of the now living Christ. I saw the glory of Christ now risen. I saw angels who gave witness, the clots too which once had covered heads and limbs. Christ, my hope, has has arisen. He will go before his own into Galilee. We know that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. Do you, conqueror and king, have mercy on us? Amen. Alleluia. Our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the napkin, which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy Easter, everyone. We have been celebrating Lent since the 26th of February, and this has been a Lent like no other we have known. We have had to sacrifice so much. Our attendance at church, our reception of communion, our freedom of movement. Our Lenten sacrifice this year has also seen us praying for the sick and for those we love. But it has also, I'm sure, been a Lent we have gained much from. Through our praying together as a family, through our expanded concern for each other, and the times we've been forced by circumstance to reflect and focus on those important matters of life and death. And today we celebrate the resurrection, the triumph of life over death, because we've learnt that love is greater than hatred, and suffering, however painful, is never the last word. So let us today be witnesses to the Lord and delight in the saving message of Jesus Christ. Our readings this morning invite us to a deeper form of belief. In some way, they all touch on the quality of our belief. Our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is the end of Peter's fourth and final homily. As with all good homilies, there's a summary at the end, and this is the portion we read today. It contains the major points of what we call the kerygma, which is a sort of summary of the belief all converts are required to understand and believe in. How Jesus followed John the Baptist, was baptized by the Holy Spirit. How he worked healing miracles and delivered us from sin and the evil spirit. How he was betrayed and killed in Jerusalem, but rose again on the third day. How he appointed apostles to preach the forgiveness of sins, and that this was foretold by the prophets in the scriptures. It's the summary of belief, but it's also an insight into who Peter will become. Remember that Peter denied knowing Jesus three times. But Jesus still chose him to be the leader, the witness to his resurrection. Peter finds his voice in the Acts of the Apostles and is given the grace to boldly proclaim his belief. Each part of this belief will be touched on in the remaining seven Sundays of Easter. And that's worth noting too, that whilst Lent had six weeks, Easter has seven 
because the good news of Jesus' resurrection is at the heart of our faith and our belief in God's saving action in the world. In our second reading from the letter to the Colossians, we are invited to focus our gaze heavenward so as to see Christ. This is a theme in the Gospel too. What or who is revealed and how do we react? We're told in our second reading that when we see Christ revealed in His glory, that is, in the resurrection, we will also find ourselves revealed with Him in glory. This means, I think, that the resurrected life that Jesus has is meant for us too. The invitation for us is to believe and to live that good news. Then we have the Gospel for today. And many of you might be wondering, where is Jesus? He's not actually there. And that really is the point. What is our reaction to not finding him? Because he is with us now in a new way, not like we have encountered him before. We celebrate his resurrection today, but we do so differently because, as we say at every funeral, life is changed not ended, and we have to see Jesus in this changed way, with new eyes. Our Gospel gives us three examples of the sort of reaction we might have in terms of our belief of the resurrection. I'm sure we shall be able to identify with at least one of them. Our Gospel begins by noting it was still dark when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. For the author of this Gospel, this means that Jesus, the light, was not there. Mary is so distraught after noticing that the stone had been removed that she instantly runs to tell the other apostles. She loves Jesus and cares for him deeply. That is why she is the first to arrive at the tomb. But she does not believe yet. Her grief stops her from even entering the tomb. She just notices that the stone was rolled away, and so she calls Peter and John. We know that immediately after this gospel, Jesus himself will appear to Mary, and she will declare that I have seen the Lord, and so become the apostle to the apostles. But at this point, she is still in mourning, and she can only jump to the conclusion that they have taken Jesus away. There is confusion and unfaith in her, not remembering what Jesus had said would happen on the third day. And like many religious people, a tendency to scapegoat quickly when feeling upset. That can sometimes be us, right? We know our belief, but when tragedy hits, we're just overwhelmed and we end up in sorrow and confusion. If that is us, we can take strength that in such situations Jesus himself will find a way to appear to us. Perhaps like Mary Magdalene, we will not recognize him immediately. But when we do recognize him, our faith will be surer and stronger. Have there been times when we might have felt overwhelmed with tragedy and found it hard to believe in Jesus' resurrection? or even in Jesus himself? If so, I invite you to identify with Mary Magdalene this morning. But now let us turn to look at the reactions of John and Peter. John, the beloved disciple, arrives at the tomb first, but he waits for Peter. Some theologians, like Hans Urs von Balthasar and others, have noted that Peter being the one to whom authority was given, represents the ecclesial office, whilst John, the one whom Jesus loved in a special way, represents ecclesial love. I've often found this insight comforting to realize that even at the beginning, the official church often arrives at a point of belief after the loving church has already discovered something. But that part of the church waits patiently for the authorities to realize what it is before them. John sees past the empty tomb 
and notices the burial clothes and waits. And Simon Peter eventually then arrives and notices not only the burial clothes, but that the headcloth has been neatly folded. Biblical scholars often point out that when Jesus called forth Lazarus from the dead, he appeared still wearing those burial clothes. And in fact, the headcloth is specifically mentioned. And so in a way, Lazarus still bore the trappings of death. But with Jesus, all these trappings of death have remained behind. This tells us that Jesus conquered death. But whilst we're told Peter sees this fact, there is no reaction in him. We can only imagine how Peter must have been feeling, a mixture of raw emotion. Remember, he had been the leader, the most committed to the Lord. But then he had denied knowing Jesus three times. There was a mixture of confidence and despair in him. He wasn't able to see the whole truth because he had hurt the Lord with his denial. Isn't that like a lot of us in our journey of faith with God? We can be confidently committed to him in one moment, and then we sin. We deny even knowing the Lord and act as if we didn't. Like Peter, this means we battle to understand the whole truth of what is plainly before us. Jesus suffered, died, and rose again because he loved us. But whilst we might know parts of that, we find it difficult to accept God's love because we feel we do not deserve it because of our denials and our imperfect love. And so we do not totally believe. If that is you, take comfort that Jesus still loves and trusts Peter, and he still loves and trusts us. And remember how Peter appears in the first reading. It's possible for our faith and our belief to grow and to develop. Then we have the other disciple who arrived first, who saw the clothes but waited for Peter. His relationship with the Lord is stronger, which is why he ran faster. He sees the same clothes and we're simply told that he saw and believed that Jesus rose from the dead. I think the invitation today is for us to believe like the other disciple, John, whose gospel account we are reading this morning. John's belief comes from a deep and intimate friendship with the Lord. He is the beloved disciple, or the one whom Jesus loved. John is the one who believes without seeing Jesus. Mary will later have Jesus come, and she in turn will tell Peter, but John already believes. We are being asked to identify with John because like him, do we believe without seeing him? Have we experienced Jesus' love for us? Can we take up the challenge to be like John and nurture the loving relationship we have with the Lord and so believe? What we're being asked to believe is that Jesus rose from the dead today. We all might be at different stages of being able to proclaim that good news. And that's okay, because even the first disciples received that news in different ways and progressed differently. If our proclamation of hallelujah feels different to others, that's okay. But pray that you might trust that God is working something inside of you and helping you to believe. It might be helpful for us to look at the moments of resurrection in your own life. Those moments where Jesus has revealed himself to you. Because I firmly believe that Jesus is already working in your own life, finding ways to reveal himself to you. Perhaps it might be like Mary in moments of grief and tragedy. Or like Peter, in gifts of courage to dispel our confusion and embolden us to be witnesses to others. Or maybe it's like John, who has faith and hope because he loved already 
and so is more easily trusting that the Lord is risen. As we make a spiritual communion today, I'd like to invite you to remember those moments in your life when you felt God's love for you. Perhaps it is a recent experience. Perhaps it was when you were younger. At communion time, focus on God's love for you. Ask God to help you re-experience that love, so that like John, you might see and believe in the good news, without having seen. Trust your experience of God's love for you. Ask God to deepen that experience, so that you might truly know God's love and share that good news with others. I wish you, my dear friends, and to all your loved ones, a happy and holy Easter. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us stand and profess our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers, those here mentioned and those in our hearts at home, to the Lord. For the Church, that we may bring the light of Christ into the dark corners of our society and a message of hope to all who are struggling as the world remains challenged by the coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For Pope Francis, that God will inspire and sustain his ministry as he leads the church in witnessing to the gospel and offering loving service to those in need, especially the poor and the most vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all children on this Easter day, that they may grow to their fullest potential and be taught how to celebrate God's love for them each day. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all those who are suffering mentally, physically or spiritually, let us pray too for those who have asked for prayer and made prayer requests electronically. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all women, on this day of resurrection, we hear how women were the first to witness to the risen Jesus. May we, today, listen to the voices and wisdom of women by ensuring that we build a church and society in which the dignity of all women is honoured and respected. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. In silence, let us now bring our own needs and all the needs of those we love before the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that we can make all these prayers, spoken and unspoken to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son and our brother. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, and having made acceptable by your blood and my sacrifice, and your service to be pleasing to you, O God. Lord, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Ignatius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Buti Tlachale and Duncan Sorke, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not not worthy worthy that that you should should enter under my my roof, but only only say the word, word, and my soul soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favour, so that renewed by these paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.